feedback someone yeah. once told me is the breakfast of champions yeah it's such a phenomenal quote i remind remind myself of that because it actually turns around says welcome feedback like mm. give it to me tell mm. me now and i'm going to eat it for breakfast and then come back feeling like power through the day yeah so it's a great analogy i think uh, sharing frank mm. authentic feedback but at the same time with a positive attitude of saying what could you do better yeah and this is how you could maybe get there and what are the resources you need you're a strict uh, manager mm, i don't know about strict manager but yeah your I team mean, needs to drop in the comments and tell us what you thank feel you about. team i love you <laughs>
that gives you a head start in the days what i've been doing it also i think one clears your mind space huh. uh, i never entered a gym okay till i was well past 40 which is a lot right i used to play sport and hmm. then you kind of give up and all of that what i found was in that those 15 reps that you do uh you're actually focusing on just doing that if you don't focus on it you can hurt yourself you can you're do right. things wrong etc those short bursts of focus is something that i've actually brought back into the way you know when you're at work and you really need to focus on what someone's saying because through all the angrezi and all the english you have to listen to people right yeah yeah so just that ability to quieten your mind a little bit and focus perfect that's a that's a good Great one analogy it's yeah. a perfect analogy interesting so you basically aap ki journey ke bare mein hum log thoda sa baat karte hain mm-hmm. uh, we've gone you've gone from sales to strategy to marketing no uh sales sales to marketing innovation i mean business p- uh, portfolios etc etc and uh, in the middle i actually took a post pepsico okay i joined a company called uh, royal dsm yes. which no one knew about huh. uh most pe- most times i end up in a city with a business card and people would say right we've never heard of this company but it was a one line brief how do we eliminate hidden hunger or yes. malnutrition coming from deficiencies i read that yeah right in for the next billion in india and uh, this is not about those people who've got all the horlicks and the good stuff in their lives yeah yeah this is about people who actually have tight budgets eat dal chawal roti but need to get the right vitamins mm. vitamin b12 big deficiency big iron, deficiency 80% of women have some kind of iron deficiency at some point in their life that's true so these are massive massive issues that impact productivity growth childbirth learning every piece of it right uh so that was like literally my don quixote tilt at windmills mission and i <laughs> loved it we started out with literally saying what do we want to do yeah. how do we create products how do we even sell them and it's it's a tough ask and i know that team is still trying to figure it out i'm sure but that was my passion project so that was and i know i'm going to go back to doing something like that again but yeah yeah, yeah. nahi aap logo ko pata nahi jin logo ko this is a good time for me to tell you all that you should just look at the uh, sdgs just know yes. about the development goals that the government has also set and is moving towards 2030 True. goal hai 2050 ke goal hai In fact, जैसे आप SDGs की बात कर रहे हैं तो यू नो हमारे प्रधानमंत्री ने जी आई थिंक वॉज ओनली अबाउट लास्ट ईयर दैट ही एक्चुअली अनाउंसड एफ आर के विच इज फोर्टिफाइड राइस कर्नल्स टू बी एडेड बैक इज सप्लीमेंट इन टू द फूड राशन द फूड सप्लीमेंट्स इन अबाउट सो दैट्स द काइंड ऑफ वर्क दट वी वर डूइंग फोर्टिफाइड राइस कर्नल्स एक्सेट्रा सो आई रिमेम्बर मैसेजिंग दैन द हेड ऑफ द बिजनेस हु इज लाइक हु इज इक्वली पैशनेट अबाउट मेकिंग दिस मेकिंग सम इम्पैक्ट विद इवन विद बिजनेस दैट्स अबाउट विटामिन एंड सप्लाइज uh to say this is that moment right where finally what we've been waiting for has yeah. happened so yeah you're absolutely right sdgs and hidden hunger is right up there along with productivity inclusion for example if you don't if you don't supplement for women how are they going to get productive and get into the workforce right because if you're constantly plagued with anemia etc etc that's why you think you're not yeah. performing yeah but it's actually because your diet's not letting you do it 100% yeah It's interesting that you talk about it because our consumers generally who everybody who's watching yeah. are getting so conscious today right yeah. as as somebody who sits at a very strategic level at a brand space and like you know when you're not just marketing but you're looking at you know this consumerism which is so conscious it's called conscious consumerism for everybody who doesn't know um uh, how are you approaching things what are the kind of strategies that you're building and then deploying So I think conscious consumerism is here to stay. Haan ji. I wish though that it was less outwardly reflective and it was more about doing things that you know are good for you okay. and the world around you. What I mean is that a lot of us look at conscious consumerism as what brands I'm going to wear, ah. so am I conscious of what I'm wearing or not or oh, how do I look, right? That's the simple way of saying oh I'm very conscious of what I mean, how do you normally put it in language? That's true. I'm very conscious of what I eat. but actually you know whether it's local buying uh. local whether it's going back to products grains millets which are traditional whether it's looking at your overall impact in your world and as simple as you know do you carry a water bottle with you uh which is you know versus buying mm-hmm. bottled water all the time uh do you propagate or do you prefer brands uh that come to you with some kind of acknowledgement of what they good at and what they may be not good at because everyone's on 100% we're yeah. all human brands are 
pretty much an extension of us as human beings right Correct. so it's a so i think conscious consumerism Anji. is about the first step for me is education yeah. knowing you right knowing the good and the bad i want to have fun too i True. want to have a good life i want to enjoy a drink at the end of the day but yeah. the choices i make and how i therefore live a more conscious life on what i consume it's a wonderful idea it can just go across every single thing True. Right? Like Mowgli who eats only Murray biscuits. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you all at Signature are doing something interesting. I've heard about the mangrove uh, regeneration project. Yeah, and that's a nice segue. But yeah. actually when we did the renovation of Signature, I was not even at Diageo then, right? Okay. I joined Diageo just about 18 months ago. The renovation was well underway. We said we did not want to go out and say, oh, guess what? I'm just a better, smooth, nice whiskey. Of course, we're all of that. We have a fantastic blend, beating blend. but we chose to talk about the fact that we are going to be a green whiskey and that's a journey so diageo has what we call the spirit of progress when mm-hmm. it these are goals that we've clearly defined on everything from uh, conserving water and being water positive to lowering our carbon emission footprint to being sustainable by design not by accident or not because you know we can find someone who's going to help us recycle something and all of those goals including by the way diversity and inclusion women in the workforce all of that right as part of those goals we said what do we want to do we said we want to be a green whiskey what does that mean that means we only put out paper that is fse certified right oh, yeah. we're not and therefore it's a way of showing that we're not cutting down trees yeah and we're also phasing out by the way a lot of our packaging material interesting uh bottles that are fully recyclable products that are natural yeah um and it goes further so the mangrove project yeah comes actually after we first gone in okay and redesigned and oh. redesigned for sustainability so this is not something that you go out and say guess what and i'm not i'm not saying you shouldn't do that yes. this is not about going and telling everyone else what to do ah. it's first doing an aud- an audit and by the way we did put out our first audit on sustainability and where we rank okay equally with areas that you know we want to improve on and will continue to work on it's something that i was a very strong reason for why i chose to join diageo because it's a company that actually walks the talk means it yeah. very serious goals all of our leadership is signed on to it anything that we want to do the question is do we really need to do this and is there a better way of doing it admittedly so my generation has not done the best job of the last 40 yeah, right yeah that doesn't mean we can't overcompensate over the next Truly. you know whatever 20 30 whatever you're lucky to live for so yeah i think that's the piece now on the mangrove project it it was interesting we were looking at saying how do we make a real difference and mm-hmm. do something that we can link up to very very strongly and also do it consistently over many years these things are not short term you yeah, know yeah. give us this and we'll fund it to do xyz so we reached out with the help of our own uh, sustainability and our our team that that looks at all of this and they came back with how coastlines in india india has one of the longest coastlines yeah it's beautiful in the world, right yeah. and coastlines are all about i mean we've heard of the sundarbans correct in bombay we've got the you know bandu pumping <laughs> <laughs> the backwaters actually correct. they're also wetlands right yeah they are and they've got rich biodiversity which no one really appreciated because what it does is it prevents things like cyclones causing tremendous true, damage true flooding livelihoods uh protects fishing villages flooding That's true. rising sea levels it helps you compensate for that migratory birds i love the flamingos that flock our coasts yeah. or the the ridley turtles and yes. all of that's all along bombay i mean the indian coastline so when we went i mean we found that there's this ngo which actually takes the native mangrove seeds okay puts them takes them up to rear them as saplings and there's obviously not every seed becomes a sapling mm-hmm. it's about a 30% loss there okay. then takes those those saplings and replants them because a lot of our mangroves have been destroyed for natural or other reasons right so put them back in let them come to full adulthood over there so you're actually regaining that cover creating okay. back those ecosystems and also by the way protecting livelihoods and people and yes. where they can live and stay so for us it's about right now we're looking at five villages in orissa okay and uh, while for us it's ambitious as a start it's a three year commitment uh-huh. and uh, i'm hoping that this is a partnership that we can take much wider as well 
once of course we've proven our chops i mean I'm we have sure. to make sure that we do a good job so 100% i wish you all yeah. the best and the, and the teams where in odisha i would love to sometime just come and be able to uh, be a part of something like Very this Very close to puri i plan to visit in 6 months you're invited done sorted yeah, yeah. that we're actually launching this with uh, earth day are wah and uh, so you're hearing it first haan ji it came to you first i don't know when you were here but it yes. you certainly heard it first and it's a big so part did you of so did all everybody <laughs> who's watching mashable india yeah I'm personally hugely excited about this. Hugely. I'm hoping that we can actually make this something of a movement pretty much across the country, whether 100%. it's the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, whether it's the coastlines and cities, but we're going to start small. We're going to make sure we do it right. And uh, the big idea behind this is native species mm. and not just taking anything and planting anywhere. Yeah. So it's really taking the ecosystem into account okay. and making sure that whatever we do is, you know, massively sustainable now why are mangroves important can i give a bit of a science lesson you should i i'm sure i'm i'm, I'm up for it we have people who are obsessed yeah. with science watching this i'm sure yeah so uh, mangroves sequester 3 to 4 times the carbon that normal trees do acre yes, to acre they do you're right i've read yeah. this yes so a mangrove in effect and it's not just about those nice tigers and the sundarbans uh-huh. or the turtles or the flamingos it actually is helping you build a massive carbon sink which oh, can wow. take out a lot more carbon than just normal trees Sweet. and people underestimate that because typically you go and see a wetland i mean it's smelly it's squelchy you yeah. know you don't really like to go there i mean i remember bombay right you're like yes. that yeah i know yeah mahim creek and all of that <laughs> yeah but it's hugely important and and i think that's why we chose mangroves because the impact on going moving towards zero carbon emissions for us is massive yeah and hopefully we can make a big change there no i'm sure i was i'm touch wood to that i love it it's amazing that everybody who's hearing can learn about this from us but how does a brand then like let's say do sustainability right so the first thing we want to do was be water positive right and reduce water consumption in a country where water arguably is going to be one of the most valuable resources as it is yes, of course that's absolutely. true by the way globally That's true. That's true globally. The second one was like I said, a journey to zero emissions. Hmm. Zero net emissions, net carbon zero is the goal. Net carbon zero means of course I'm going to emit. I mean, I'm in a yeah. lovely car and for everything that they'd like to say about being electric, the fact is there will be, right? The battery is made somewhere. True. So there are going to be emissions. How do you come to net carbon zero? And that's a massive journey in undertaking. So everything from packaging to how you package IBC to the vehicles that transport you to renewable energy in your own manufactured plants, right? So all of that comes into that, and there's much, 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 much more. I'd like to pawn off some of your carbon credits for this ride to make this carbon neutral, so that we we'll talk. We don't get hit. <laughs> we don't get hit in, in our comment you? section. So can I interest you in maybe planting some more of those yes, mangroves? Yes, we will. We will, we will yeah. work towards coming to Puri yeah. and working on the mangrove project with you. Yeah, I'm. I'm really looking forward to going and seeing that in operation. Hundred percent. We'll film. So, we'll film it with you. So that's the second piece. The third one is therefore to first clean. I mean, literally, go out and say, "What can we do as a business?" Yeah. Like I said, we've done all of that work on signature, and only then do you go out and then make the bigger, broader consumer Correct. claims. You're right. Yeah. It's an inside-out approach, and you then, mentioned it earlier also. Yeah, I mean, it's like if your house is, you know, people in glass houses, etc., etc., etc. Because analogies can go anywhere. So yes. maybe. Yes. Yes. My point being that now that we're going out and making this, we want to make sure that we also have the potential to keep doing more. We're also very real that. there's going to be so much more that we can do so i don't think we're standing here from the pulpit and saying oh guess what we've done it all yeah. absolutely not um across our brands and our business we have different aspects to sustainability like as i spoke about positive drinking yeah. incredibly important to everyone at diageo our motto is drink better not more mm. and for a company that sells alcobev and spirits you know honestly that's the that's just putting it right there and saying we don't really care yeah that you don't drink more and more we'd rather that you drink better and drink choose your brands uh, basis that the other thing that we talk about is inclusion and diversity but you know what that does it means that when i come in or when any of my peers who are anywhere on the entire gender spectrum all want to be a part of it because for them this validates 
why they come to work every day yeah, because yeah. you can make a difference you can make the impact and that's also a conversation that is so live and relevant today in the country right 100% so i think these are all the things that you do on sustainability it's yeah. not just about oh i planted two trees here haan ji that's uh, important yeah. i i mean i would say everyone should correct mm-hmm. but it goes to much more i mean the impact you can make as a business that's working to do better while you pursue your goals i think is what keeps me engaged uh there is a big uh i don't know if it's a i mean there is the fact that there exists greenwashing also so first we should i think explain what greenwashing is to our folks and then you want to talk about it yeah sure what happens is essentially when you're trying to be carbon neutral yeah you you end up only buying let's say carbon credits or you're ending up doing this process of greenwashing yeah uh where you're not truly working towards a sustainable goal yeah but just trying to be a face first communication first marketing strategy first yeah. person and true sustainability doesn't come through because greenwashing kicks in so i'm sure you all would have evaluated the risks of that and you would have wondered totally and we actually put out a report against it last year oh yeah so yeah we did which is to say that what are we doing to actually fundamentally move the business ah. towards our spirit of progress goals and also to build long term future back sustainability which yeah. means even for the volumes that i project that i'll do maybe 10 years from now hmm. am i working towards that today so whether it's 100% renewables in your plants that's not about green washing that's actually about putting down the capexes and saying that we're going to be you know and a lot of our plants are in remote locations we're actually sharing surplus power back into gri- into grids in some that must have been a lot of groundwork then it is it is a lot of groundwork what a positivity right uh we announced some time ago that we actually um harvested water from the air in Rajasthan oh, which wow. is a desert right yeah Interesting. and that goes into one of our most gorgeous whiskies which we launched called yeah. Godavan which is I love Godavan now you love Godavan do you know the story behind Godavan no idea the word Godavan is actually the local word for the great indian bustard which is a national which is the state bird of Rajasthan oh, wow. and is actually a uh, a bird that has to be it's a protected species okay right because they're very limited numbers so we're actually partnering not just by putting the bird on the label but we're actually working with uh, the government and with the, even the maharaja of uh, jaisalmer areva to actually protect not only the environment but also reintroduce the bird into a lot more habitat so it can come back and its numbers can go up a lot of us know about save the tiger but this is something that again very very serious commitment and that's why this is a craft whiskey it comes from alwar which is in rajasthan and this entire story is about local and building back local diversity on species so interesting so if a brand's looking to talk sustainability yeah. it starts inside out true it starts with a with a lot of groundwork over many years before you can actually go out and make a public statement 100% and uh, that for me is therefore not green washing but green commitment 100%. right and yeah and and we it's a journey i think we're all learning yeah i don't think anyone knows the perfect answers hanji <laughs> i'd we all aspire to be patagonia yeah yeah but not everyone can be there that's true yeah it's knowing your reality is also but working with them to make a better world yeah and i think in india people get that yeah i think indians are really the master of saying i know my reality but it doesn't stop me from reaching for better what a nice way to put it yeah that's so true also i'm just reminiscing about indians anyway yeah so tell me this as a woman moving through her journeys how hard or easy has it been for you if you have to uh, tell us about you know meandering through boardrooms or just mm-hmm. meetings and emails conversations i'm sure you've seen something here and there and everywhere you know that's like a reminiscing statement for me <laughs> <laughs> i honestly um maybe i just don't see it as being having been really hard for me mm. maybe because i just got it easy right i okay. mean i as an i i had the benefit of a great education okay i managed to go to a great college and very supportive family etc i think the the work that i did at vedika or conversations i've had in the past when you're mentoring or you've got skip levels with women it makes you realize how inured you get to as a woman leader to walking into a room where you are the only woman 
you forget about what that feels like and that's the watch out because you may have made the journey serendipitously you know through accident because you you just got the benefit of someone giving you a platform right not everyone gets that one the second is it is intimidating sometimes mm. so at vedika i've mentored a couple of women who for the first time were working uh, in a corporate environment as in they were the first woman in their family yeah. not just to work but also to work in the corporate environment oh, wow. and they had i mean and their challenges were less about branding and positioning but more about saying how do i stand tall in these occasions how do i confidently speak with the psychological safety of knowing that you know what i'm putting out there can add genuine value True. and will not be you know interpreted in one way or the other and i think women are a lot more conscious about the way they present themselves 100%. and how they stand out right yeah should i wear this jewelry and go should i wear this yeah, dress etc etc yeah. everything and and i think uh, it's taken me time for example to also turn around and say listen whatever i am and what i like to wear is what i'm going to be yeah. i am not going to try and fit myself into that mold of that corporate woman with that jacket and the trousers etc etc but it takes time to get there and you don't know that it's okay so that's why i think role models and more women or people across the gender spectrum in roles makes a big difference and people laugh when i say this but having known that we were one of the first countries in the world to have a woman prime minister That's true. who was confident to wear a sari which was a handloom on yes. the world stages it made a difference to me i was like wearing a star- sari on any world stage is so cool. fine right yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not like i have to dress in a dress and stockings and high heels i mean that's one part to your point on how difficult and how easy um first of all i think everyone has a difficult journey in their own way yeah yeah uh for women though and i'll never take that away which is to say that being in a minority makes you sometimes stand out makes you feel uncomfortable like there's so many days when i had a big presentation and my daughter would feel unwell or she threw up her breakfast and you're like murphy's law dude you know really if it has to happen it'll happen yeah and and the thing is i you know i really enjoyed that part of me as well right as does my husband yeah but it sometimes i think we take a lot on we want it all to be perfect we want to be the one managing those meals at home <laughs> there's also mom guilt yes totally totally so all of that when it comes together can be really stressful i'm sure the one piece of advice i give people is hang in there yeah it'll get better at some point you'll figure what are the negotiables at some point you'll figure what are your superpowers and what you know what you may be not so good at at some point your kids will grow up your family will come around you and it takes a village it takes a lot of people so the other piece of advice to everyone who's not a woman who's listening to this is just hang in there as well with her yeah, you know uh, yeah cuz it's a great ride for both of you and and people grow and evolve on their journey together and yeah i'm giving relationship advice gosh <laughs> but everyone evolves on their journey but be open to evolution be yes. open to change realizing that you are conditioned and you can change yes absolutely and enjoy it take yeah. those moments out shop for yourself even if it's at the airport yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know 100%. do that kind of stuff eat something nice like there was this one team we you know that i had we used to travel to different places anji and the rule was get something interesting back oh, wow, which we perfect. can all eat together and it's not about expensive so it's about those ragi biscuits from <laughs> one part which you've gone to or whatever yeah or the sandesh from kolkata you know it's perfect. about throwing things in the mix yes so make it fun bring yourself to work i yeah, think right. uh, the best places that i have worked at and i've admittedly worked at some really good places the places when i've been at maximum flow has been when i can just bring my entire self to work You're so right. i can walk in and say today my day was just awful the way it started the traffic uh, the fact that i picked out a shirt that had a stain that i hadn't noticed and i had to put it back in and then you know rejig what else you know so if you could talk <laughs> about all of that with your colleagues yeah yeah so yeah no, but it's cool that then because you want to go to a place like this you're also providing the space for your colleagues and your you team to, to you yeah. know be but i'm sure there are days so like as a leader how do you reprimand or how do you huh. uh you know bring someone up the curve and then a little lost maybe i would say um you know feedback someone yeah. once told me is the breakfast of champions yeah It's such a phenomenal quote. I remind remind myself of that because it actually turns around and says welcome feedback 
like mm. give it to me tell mm. me now and i'm going to eat it for breakfast and then come back feeling like power through the day yeah so it's a great analogy i think uh, sharing frank mm. authentic feedback but at the same time with a positive attitude of saying what could you do better yeah and this is how you could maybe get there and what are the resources you need i i don't know that everyone it's a habit i know when i started my career yeah when feedback came at me i used to think like it's like this wave that just slapped me in my face right and knocked me flat yeah and then i figured that no hold on the fact that someone's sharing it with you means two things one they've spent time thinking about what's working what's not but equally they're maybe giving you that little bit of a lifeline to getting better and developing and that's the one thing that i I think as Indians we we hate bad news. We we, do. we hate giving the bad news by the way. We're also very emotional it. workers, no? And we're very emotional. Yeah. So it's a it's it's so much of yourself that you bring to work, right? Yeah. I mean of the 12 hours you're awake if you're at work for 8, 10 hours, yeah, I mean yeah. in some form and manner. Correct. Especially in the post Zoom world. <laughs> yeah. So it's a it's a lot. It's a massive commitment. But just remind yourself that feedback is the breakfast that you need to power through your day. and and if if you look at it like that you'll actually welcome and you'll ask for it the way india consumes spirit before pandemic and post pandemic what yep. is the what is that transformation been like i want to understand yeah consumption so patterns it's really exciting ha huh? and i think you're seeing a lot of their energy spilling into outlets into you know the new concepts in terms of bars and yeah. restaurants and so three or four big things that happened through the pandemic and i'm sure most of us can uh can connect relate, with that yeah. or relate to that one is of course people started looking at experimentation far more mm. because people are watching k dramas there's ramen in every single grocery store in a building outlet yeah. you know so if i look at it i mean there is this whole globalization look at uh, money heist right yeah yeah i mean pepsi could put it on a pack when was the last time that a tv Uh, drama Correct. found its way onto one of the most mass delivered FMCG products. FMCG products, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I think one is exploration True. and experimentation, right. yeah. massive. The other thing is experiences. Experiences became a premium because when you were stuck at home, yeah, you suddenly longed for saying, "Why didn't I do? I don't know, whatever." that weekend trip to goa with my friends when i could have right? right or fly down for someone's birthday when yeah. i could have yeah so the whole experience piece has gone up and the third one is i think people are choosing different kinds of social occasions yeah. so earlier it was a big party big promotion going out all the time but equally i started valuing uh third spaces where me and my friends get together the chatwali party ha huh. right suddenly that becomes something where you want to wind down be with people yeah. who really matter care who who were there with you by the way through maybe lonely periods or periods right. when you were going through a tough time all of that comes together beautifully in the spirits industry because one exploration and experimentation if earlier i was about you know just saying oh this is my favorite drink of choice or what my father drank suddenly i'm like can i have something which actually better expresses where i am right now so uh whether it is you know a, a new gin that you want to try out yeah. or a new vodka cocktails the way you make them it's all part of the whole thing right uh, local ingredients and you know what i can try and mix at home what i can make suddenly everyone is putting out those videos remember dalgona coffee yeah, yeah. about the ways <laughs> to make great cocktails and Correct. infusions and all of that the second thing uh that uh, that has led to is a lot more of experiences so mm. i'm willing to pay more i mean people are amazed by the prices today of travel yeah. because people want to go out and experience things true off the beaten track uh sidecar beautiful bar set up the top 50 bars in the world right we partner extensively with them oh yeah on cre- you know on curating different cocktails and menus of course it's young dup lama and minakshi singh i'm sure but we love partnering because young dup actually worked with signature acha on creating local cocktails at zero oh wow which is the festival in arunachal I in know, zero I know valley zero, yes yes now that's a festival that refuses to greenwash they will blacklist people who are greenwashing so we partnered with them to say we're going to make sustainable bars uh drink serves which are lo- all locally sourced ingredients and young dope actually helped us curate that menu are wa we actually took that menu to other places in the east as well and they were a super super hit 
then the glasses you drank off how those could be recycled plugging to actually take away all the all the waste that was there it was all part of the experience at zero that's what the folks at zero do but we were really happy as signature to partner with them on that journey and now we're looking at saying how do we scale it up but keeping sustainability in mind right i mean 100%. those two tend to go hand in hand uh, well they tend to be contrary but we need for them to go they hand in to, hand yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so we did all of that um and that was part of the whole experience piece go to zero and drink local you know eat local uh so that was one part of it the third one i was talking about was also um uh, the entire space of me and, and finding different social occasions including hmm. the smaller occasions and i'm not going to save my best whiskey for just that promotion event yeah i'm going to have it every day so if You're i right. know that this is a great drink and i'm with my close friends I'm going to have that drink with them. Why not? And make the most of every moment. Choices have changed, yeah. right? The last one that's actually working in this industry more than any other is premiumization. Yeah. People are actually moving up and they are seriously saying that we don't need to drink more, but we can drink better. And that's something that in India we're seeing massive energy towards, which we're delighted by because that speaks to our philosophy. I love it. Yeah. It's interesting. Ha. Huh. So all of that how does that come together for us right i mean look at it uh we've launched godavan yeah. phenomenal indian single malt yes which is one amazing awards globally right blonde uh, uh well johnny walker blonde is a global but okay. it's gone i mean people love it in india i love it yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's for the guy who doesn't really want just that straight whiskey mix it's for True. mixing it's you know a signature We've yeah. never seen such momentum behind a brand that's talking green whiskey because I think covid also made people conscious of the fact that there's just one planet and yes. there is no planet B right 100%. so again we're seeing tremendous momentum i mean people are actually playing back that i like the fact that i can choose this whiskey great tasting yeah but also so i think there's a lot of that that's coming through uh, we also launched RC American Pride Royal yeah. Challenge American Pride which has got bourbon interesting one of the mo- highest uh, retention the retention rates i'm sorry that's the marketer on me yes highest retention rates that you know we've seen across the category why people just love the liquid they just love the liquid and the fact that it's bourbon and i mean who thought that indians will turn and say okay that's my bourbon kind of liquid and that kind of profile so i think some really good insights and learnings post covid uh, in the spirits industry in particular the sheer explosion therefore of propositions has been phenomenal entrepreneurs coming in more and more women entrepreneurs coming into spirits so since you you like that and and we actually partner with we're looking at partnering with organizations like Sonder Connect etc where we actually encourage more and more women into the F&B space nice uh but i think the difference post covid is the confidence that an average home chef would have to take it and make it much much larger yeah so how do we actually make that an energy and a force for change positive change uh versus men telling you how you can trick your wish that's what that's what and the reference that she's made is to the male feminist in me uh go watch it on how to fly <laughs> and how i look forward to having more women in the workforce and doing such amazing new perspective things that we just didn't yeah we, we we can't look at life like that so anyway i'll come back to uh answering a uh, questioning a very big set of like standard question that i have okay is failures teach you more than successes always no yeah so like have you had those kind of bouts in your time oh, and massive. can you tell us about one, one? or two yeah oh okay i'm going to i have to choose it very carefully right to yeah. show that it's a good learning one as well <laughs> cuz there are lots of failures um this is a very funny one marketing failure okay yeah we launched these really incredible flavors on lays ah uh-huh. i would challenge anyone to remember their names yes i know what you mean the no. lemon no uh, No, not those spunky pimento <laughs> and balsamic blast. Oh, I had the bl- balsamic blast, the brown brown packet. It was phenomenal flavors by the way. <laughs> They won every single on you know top whatever awards. Uh, quartile. No, 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 on flavors. Okay. Testing. Ah. Who called something spunky pimento? I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I still like my blue lace. And we had this and we had this phenomenal creator with uh Dhoni and I remember Seth. that. top of the box i mean they did such a phenomenal job they see netas just on top but spunky pimento vote for this and that i mean no one could say those names i did that 
Oh wow! Congratulations. Yeah, yeah thank you, thank you. And My then, first ad that yeah. I ever made, Unilever days, was rated by the creative director many years later as the worst ad he'd ever made. Oh wow! Yeah, so you want to talk about failure? Some public callouts over there. <laughs> But what did it teach me? One, never call a flavor spunky pimento. <laughs> but the other one is that creativity. You know, honestly, uh, it tested well. We had a link yeah, test yeah, yeah. piece in it. It worked well there. But between that test and translation, mm. um, how you bring it alive, the partners, how you co-create. I think in marketing, one of the things you you learn, sales and marketing, Anji. organizations, whatever, what you do. I mean, whichever way you want to have it. You are as good as the team that you work with. That's true. And how do you get people to come to work feeling they can contribute, and the best people, and that's your job. Yeah. Because you bring that energy to the room, right? That's true. So there are days when I've been called out for chewing people, left, right, and center. Oh yeah. Yeah, it happens. All of us go through it. Come on. Uh, manager. Mm, I don't know about strict manager, but yeah. Your I team mean, needs to drop in the comments and tell us what you. Thank you, team. I love you. <laughs> Uh, but it's a, but you know that's the thing, right? You learn that no, it's it's you've got to feedback's great. I'm sure. Like I said earlier, but yeah, you've got to make people want to be in the room and yeah. work with you. Otherwise, you'll have the a great testing score on a on an animatic link. Yeah. And you'll have many many years later someone calling it out as the worst creative ever shot. You're right. So, uh, are there like so? This show was also born to understand the fun side of, you know, <laughs> our business leaders. Yeah. So, what's on your playlist? Can yeah, you tell us? <laughs> my playlist. Yeah. yeah. So my playlist again is is I'm a repertoire consumer. Acha. Uh, spirits, books, songs, music. So, uh, but Sufi sits right on top when oh, yeah? I really want to get contemplative. But equally, Coldplay. Mm. Um, Right now, I'm trying to learn the words to some Taylor Swift songs because I'm going wow. for a concert. Concert yeah. with my daughter. Yeah, I was wondering if the daughter angle is going to come there because yeah. Taylor Swift is very. Yeah, yeah, she got tickets and she told me you're so lucky. I'm taking you. You'd better not be the only person who doesn't know the words. <laughs> and uh, so much pressure. Too much pressure. Yeah, but some of those words are really good. Anti hero. Yeah, yeah. Are you a Gen Z? Song. Gen Z mom, like is, uh, is, Gen is Gen your daughter Gen Z? Oh well, she just she's turning twenty one in May. Yeah, yeah. So Gen Z, full, full. And I don't know. I mean, I you know, it's you try boxing them and doesn't work. No, no. Can't. I love having a daughter. <laughs> yeah. So that's my side. But music, yeah, I love. Uh, by the way, um, I love. I hate saying the word, but yeah, Coke Studio fourteen is right now on repeat. It loves. I love it. It's amazing. That particular season, killer. I mean, Out you could just world. yeah. Um, and i have a lot of i'm listening to a lot of podcasts empire yeah. being one of them or interesting empire is about uh, the biggest empire ever ever built by a greedy multinational oh wow guess name of the multinational i don't know east india company of course why not yeah so it was uh, so i find and, and narrated by william dalrymple who's also one of my favorite authors so it's brilliant equally i i i, I saw something about lvmh and the empire created by okay Burn out or not, but uh, yeah. So podcast right now really really gripping for me. You should if you this like podcast. This American Life, NPR. Um, ha, those yeah. are those are good ones. I those I'm sure there are people who will comment and tell us that they listen to that. Yeah. yeah. So we were talking about spirituality. Uh, spirituality. Yeah. Um. Yes. Um. I have a couple of chants. My my nani taught me the Gayatri mantra, and I think it still calms me. Before. Yep. And I think what she taught me was the meaning behind it, which is, and her simple way of telling me about it when I was must have been less than ten was, you go in just asking God that in this moment you can be your best self, right? Yes. Yeah? Yes. So that for me is just such a brilliant message, you know, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, be your best self. That's true. The other one is, I have picked up a couple of Buddhist chants. Yeah. Yeah, but I use them. Again, to calm myself, to breathe, to be able to say, you know what, nothing really matters. So I was in Ladakh last year, made a couple of trips. It's yeah. My new favorite place, <laughs> and I'd highly endorse it for someone who wants to just revisit spirituality. And it was best said by our taxi driver, yeah. whom I asked. I said, you know, it's a great season, highest ever traffic, prices are up for everything. You guys must be so happy. You're making money. He says, not really. I think there should be only so much. Yeah. इससे ज्यादा नहीं चाहिए 
true. We're I've all heard, very happy. I've heard that from folks in Leh and Ladakh. Yeah, you have, right? Yeah. And it's interesting. He said it last year when every single hotel was sold out, taxis sold out, highs. He said there was a water problem also, right? That yeah. Time. So they're like, actually, we don't want it, and we want people to come just that much. So I can survive, and everything else stays the same. These traffic jams and these cars on the road, and who wants them? So I think that kind of spirituality. I think travel, for me, is also very spiritual. Yeah, that's if true. If you can connect with people, if you can talk to people, look at different perspectives. Hundred percent. Cultures eat the food that yeah, they're eating. You understand yeah. why that food even exists yeah. in the first place. Totally. Totally. Yeah, right. Yeah. And the comfort food may be so similar to your comfort food, and that for me is also spiritual. You're right. And I think khichdi really is that food that yeah, you find yeah, yeah, yeah. across the country. In my head, I was at dal chawal, but khichdi is the second close. My my number one food, comfort yeah. go to. Perfect. Yeah. So cool. कैसा लगा आपको? How do you like it? I've been chatting, having Good fun. fun. I don't yes. know if you got what you wanted. I did. I looked at it during the signal yeah, stop. Yeah, I know. I saw that. I saw the whole cheat list. Yeah. And I saw that, and I said, "Oh, playlist. He's going to ask me about." Yeah. So. So, up, thora. I had to remind myself about my playlist. Not nice. that I don't listen to it. But it was a quite. It was quite a range. I, I f- related to you. Yeah. I like the fact that you have such a range. You went from Sufi to Taylor Swift very fast. <laughs> But thank you so much for being on Mashable Mornings. This no, is No, not at all. Thank you for having me. Superb. I had fun and I hope you got what you wanted. Yes, we did. And you know what? There's a lot of good leadership at Diageo. I definitely want to talk to Hina someday. So, yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. So folks in Diageo who are watching this, please let us know in the comments if you need Hina to be in Mashable Mornings <laughs> and we'll have these folks talk to us about your appraisals. 